Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, an absolute stallion. Yeah. I've got a chance to see this man outside of the race car. Okay. And he might be more electrifying as just a human walking around Earth than he is in the car. And in the car, oh, oh he's going to go down as a goat. 63 wins. Whew. 63 times Damn. he has gone to victory lane whenever he's gotten into a car and raced against him in the series. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, wheel man, mm -hmm. Rowdy Kyle Bush. Yeah, Kyle! How are you, What's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? Good to see you, Pat. Hey, Kyle, great to see you. I, I hear everything's still going great for you, all these. Great to see you, Kyle. Yeah. Proud of you, buddy. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm still around. I'm still doing it. I'm still digging. Every Sunday, man, out there trying to give it a go. So, um, you know, got to keep up for this oldest, older guys. I'm the oldest one out there almost. Okay, so you're the old man. Are you still driving the same way? Because I don't want to be the describer because I'm not necessarily an uh, expert in this particular field, but I think people would say you were an aggressive driver. You weren't scared to mix it up a little bit. You were a guy who, hey, I'm going to win this, whether you're in front of me behind me or underneath me, right? In that kind of a way that you used to rate. Do you still do that? Is it still the same old Kyle Bush? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, you got to go out there and you got to try to get these wins. And, you know, we had a race earlier this year at the clash, which was out in LA, the tiny little USC stadium. We were racing in there and uh, we were running good all day long. We were running up top two, top three, top four. And then there towards the end of the race, we had an opportunity to get a little bit dirty, but uh, it was against uh, a fellow old teammate of mine, Denny Hamlin. So uh, I banged him a little bit just a couple times to try to get him up the track in order to get alongside of him, but not to wreck him. And uh, I ended up getting myself loose and fell back. So he took the win. We finished second. But, um, oh, you know, we, uh, we Live we by the sword, die by the sword there, Kyle. Yeah. I like that you're still doing it. I love that you're still yeah. doing it. Go ahead, AJ. Kyle, are you uh, maybe like 10 years from now, you ever think of joining uh, F1 and going and dominating out there in whatever kind of races they have going on? Great question. Um, I would, you know what? It, Yes, I would love to. I would love to give F1 a shot or even IndyCar a shot, run the Indy 500. But the F1 thing, it's really, really tough. So there's a lot of politics per se that has to go into that in order to get over there. But then also you have to have at least a two-year runway of working through the license application program to prove that you're worthy enough to drive a Formula One car. There's so a problem. Those worthy? guys can come over here and jump into a NASCAR tomorrow, um, but not not the same going the other way. Okay, so we hate F1. You do too? <laughs> I love F1. I love those guys. I love watching it. I'm a, form of, a fan of all forms of motorsports, but, um, you know, it's it's not for uh, it's not for. Why does the same guy win every week? Yeah, why is this nineteen of the last twenty races is Vanderstoppen? Yeah, sucks. And, and yep. like nailed it. If he <laughs> if he was to, it sounds like a watch. He probably has one. Yeah, that's a, the F one is a big watch community. It sounds like from what I've been watching along. So the Vanderstoppen watch and the Vanderstoppen dominance has just become like just so boring to watch. He'll win the pole. And then the races are like time trials, Sammy. They're stacked right behind each other. We watch you guys. We're four wide. Yeah. yeah. We're four wide sometimes. You said I'm bumping Denny Ham. Not to spin him out. Just a little, hey, huh? Uh huh? Huh? They're not doing any of that. So, like, I think we're just, like, ignorant Americans because when we get on go-karts, we're trying to cut off our friends. Every time. Whenever we're racing there. And that style of racing is not at all. Would you be good at their racing? Would you be able to do that with your driving style? Or is there levels uh. to this and different styles of driving? Yeah, I mean, the bumping and the banging, you definitely don't want to do that. Those cars are too fragile, so you're not going to do that. So let me give you an example. So our racing, NASCAR racing, to me, is like two bros or four bros or whatever, but, you know, beer cans in their hands, smashing it up, going, woo, Stone you cold, know, yeah. partying, having a good time. We're yeah. going to rough some fenders, you know. When you go and do an F1 race, little dinty, tiny, like, champagne glasses going dink and making sure that, uh, you know, you keep your fingers up or pinky up when you uh, when you take a, a sip, you know? Uh, uh, and uh, we're all about getting sloshed, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Like, That's yeah. what we thought. Yep. That's exactly yep. what we thought, which is why we feel the way we feel. You just talked about IndyCar. I believe um, somebody's doing it this year where they do the Indy 500 and Daytona 500 same day. I think your brother has done it in the past. Yeah. Right? So it's the it's the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte on the same day. They're both in May. And uh, my brother did do it. Um, he ran, I think, seventh in the Indy 500. And then he was running fourth or fifth when his engine expired uh, during the Coke 600. So he wasn't able to finish that one. But 
Um, he had a respectable showing in the Indy 500, never driving an Indy car before. So he did a really good job of that. Must be easy. This year, it's going to be uh, Tiny Kyle. Uh, so Kyle Larson uh, is going to do it. And um, he kind of actually snuck in maybe a little bit on getting that ride for me. That was uh, that's oh, no. who I was talking to about doing the deal. But um, he got there quicker. Wow. That's a race. He raced. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah, wow. yeah. Quick, getting there a race quick. within a race, right? Yeah, it's kind of your guys' world. Well, I would assume that an Indy 500 invitation – is waiting for you anytime mm -hmm. you openly want it. Hey, how about this? We will personally make sure, as somebody who has paid for a car to be in the Indy 500 before, that next year you're in the Indy 500, Kyle. Congratulations. Wow. There you go. Congrats. I appreciate that. You're going to have to good. do all the legwork. I look work. forward to it. It would be a lot of fun. You're going to have to do all the legwork. Uh -huh. You're going to have to figure out the car. You're going to have to figure – I just need to know the number of dollars that I have to pay okay. to do that. And then uh, – Yeah. Are you still in Indy? Yeah, buddy. Okay, right on. All right, you're a local boy, so you're going to be out there. Yeah, I'll definitely be there, oh, yeah. and we'll stop by that steak and shake after you chug that milk, you know what I mean? We'll have oh, a little... Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, we will. KY's right. a good time. Mm -hmm. KY celebrates great. He has a lot to celebrate. Is there... Okay, you have respect for any car drivers as well? Like, is there a... Like NASCAR, it felt like NASCAR had the big boom, right? Marketing, everything, NASCAR became the pinnacle of American racing. IndyCar maybe had it for a little bit beforehand. Andretti and them, I think they had big pops and everything. And then there was a little bit of uh, where marketing dollars are going and everything like that. At this stage here in 2024, it feels like I could see any race I want. You guys got Fox. IndyCar's got NBC, Peacocks. We're watching time trials for F1. We, we got f one on ESPN2. Yep. Feels like everything is able to be seen. If you're a driver, you want a job at any of them, you have the capability of driving in any of them, how does it kind of go whenever it talks about the different forms of cars that you're racing, seemingly? Yeah, they all kind of have their own, each discipline, their own background, and the drivers that are really good in some of those, they all come from different places. But majority, the IndyCar guys come from a road racing or go-kart style of background, or even sometimes the dirt ranks. Um, which is interesting because some of the guys that are in NASCAR now come from the dirt rakes as well. Tony Stewart kind of led the way. T Jeff Gordon led the way on that. Tony Stewart. Uh, Larson now comes from that. He's super, super good, really talented. But um, a lot of the guys that are over now on the IndyCar side are coming more so from road course racing and road course carts, go-karts, things like that. So um, I came from you know local short tracks across America running late models and Legends cars and things like that where – um, just, just different forms of, of motorsports at the local level when you're younger, how you're training yourself, how you're getting yourself ready to go to these, these different levels. But, um, there's been some crossover with sometimes the IndyCar guys, Tony Stewart, most notably, um, Smoke. he won a championship in IndyCar. He moved over to NASCAR. He became a NASCAR champion. So he was probably one of the best at being able to go and cross over to NASCAR. There's been some others that have tried it and have not been successful at it. And then Jimmy Johnson being a NASCAR seven time champion went over to IndyCar and did the crossover that way and tried it and never really came out with much on that either, you know. So he, I think he had a couple top five runs, but other than that, uh, no wins, um, you know, in, in a schedule that he ran. Are you guys still fighting over there? Who's fighting? Not you anymore. You're too damn old. That's what they're saying. Yeah. They're Whoa. saying Kyle Busch got soft, won't throw I'll fight hands. with anybody. I just got to get <laughs> further up front. <laughs> <laughs> no, is there still a little bit of dramatics in uh, pit lane or anything in NASCAR still, or is the younger generation not about that? Oh, no. The younger the younger generation is all about crashing before winning. So, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> they, they tend to just throw it in the corner alongside of you and just wipe you out more times than not. So, um, nice. you know, last week there was a couple crashes, a couple guys were pissed off at each other, but, um, I think the last guy to throw a punch was me. So, you know, that hasn't really happened lately, but, uh, yeah, you're hockey, you're old school should. hockey. Yeah, yeah. get settled a lot quicker. Yeah. That's all. I mean, those helmet, at least be a gentleman and take the helmet off. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I'm at least let me punch you in the face, but in football, well, sometimes you if just I got my helmet on. I can't hear you. If you want to mouth off to me, I'm not going to hear you anyways. So you got to do this entire yep. thing. Boom. Excuse me. Excuse what me. Was excuse me. What was yeah. that? Well, you said, excuse excuse me. me. Let me. What'd you say? Get him to take Again. his helmet off. Yeah. And Have him you, take his helmet. You keep yours on. Yeah. I want to say something. You take your, take your, I would like to, you can't hear Bam. it. Bam. Then, so then you get it. You, you do your talking with your fist. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's why I didn't want to say anything with my mouth. I fooled you the entire thing. Ty's got a question for you, KY. Yeah, KY. I read something recently about uh, Joey Logano being a cheating son of a bitch. And I was just <laughs> curious. Um, could you maybe explain that situation to like the the NASCAR layman? And also, I know. Did I say that? No, I, I don't think you said it. Or at least they didn't oh. quote that you said it. That was kind of my words. Um, but 
But also, I know you guys have like extensive checks of the the cars and everything. So is like that how guys are trying to kind of game the situation and gain an advantage uh, because everything is so regulated? Um, I mean, everything is really, really regulated. These new cars that NASCAR came out with just a couple years ago, we all buy the same parts. They're basically Legos. Like we all buy the same parts from the same suppliers. We all assemble them. We put them together. Some guys assemble them a little bit differently and they get more success out of their car. So you try to figure that out. We're all parked right next to each other in the garage area. When they take their tires off their car, you're looking in there trying to see exactly what they're doing, you know? So um, there's no secrets, not for long anyways, in, in our sport. So I don't know how anybody could really be cheating, but um, the old the old term that was used years ago was, there's two of them. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Bingo. And then the other one was that they're winning, so they must be cheating. Bingo. So that was happening in football, too, for like 24 years. Yeah. That, I think that happens everywhere. If you're at the top of the mountain, people got to assume. You're talking about the blue and red? You're not talking about the blue and red. What are you talking about? America? Northeastern team? Oh, yeah, Northeastern. So yeah. 24 yeah. years. 24 years. I don't know how you win that long. <laughs> Nobody knows how you win. They were just smarter than everybody. Good for them. And exactly what you said applies, I think, in every professional TV sport. 12, man. Uh, Ever since he left, they were not the same. Whoa, whoa, Kyle. Kyle, Kyle you Kyle, son of Kyle, a bitch. Kyle, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, uh, we know that if somebody's cheating, though, and you find out about it and you don't like it, this is exactly what you'll do. We just ran this video shot to Jeff Gluck. There you go. I knew it was coming. Look at this dude casually walking through pit lane. How you doing? And I'm Punching you in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, you're a dog. What did this yeah, guy do? No, there was no talking in that moment. So that was on the last lap of the race. He wiped me out and spun me out for third place. And so I was like, you know what? I'm done with this punk. And here we go. So, um, And then his crew tackled me. Like, he's not even there. His crew tackled me. And uh, got me to the ground. But, yeah, that was, uh, that was a fun day. Hey, there isn't a lot of times in life where somebody in 2024 – We'll walk a quarter mile right up to somebody's <laughs> face and just punch them right in the face. We respect the hell out of that. Yep. I appreciate the hell out of that. We have a hard out here on ESPN as we continue on ESPN Plus and YouTube with the great Kyle Bush. We appreciate you for joining us. Feel Good Friday is coming hot and heavy tomorrow. Yeah. Should be a great show. Be a friend, tell a friend something good nice. Good. See you tomorrow. I like that, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks for helping me there. Mm -hmm. We had a hard out there oh. about two seconds ago on ESPN so, or ESPN2 or maybe ESPN News, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, let's Language is clear. All right, good. Bingo. Whenever we, whenever we watch this Sunday, your next race, right? I assume. That's right. Yep. Where, where are Every we Sunday. Where are we? Uh, this weekend we go to Bristol, Tennessee. One of my favorites. So love Bristol. Bristol concrete. We're back on the concrete in the springtime. Last few years we've been on the dirt up there, and uh, I won one of them, but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't the most fun, I'd say. I'm not a dirt racer. I've become more of a dirt racer since my son's gotten into it, and he's the dirt racer of the family. So. Um, back on concrete at Bristol. So yeah, you guys were fun. taking your NASCARs on the dirt, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I thought that looked stupid. I'm, I'm uh, I, because <laughs> well, I've those been... cars, they're not made for that. So it, it was stupid. That's what we all kind of <laughs> said. That's why we're not there anymore. Okay, because I've been to sprint races out here and other yeah. dirt track racing thing. And it like, the way the cars are built are to use the dirt. Like, hey, we're, we're using the dirt. And then you guys. Thank you very much. No, and I'm just, uh, I'm a layman here. I'm just, I moved to Indianapolis, yeah. so I got baptized with, have you seen this type of car race? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, well, you want to go see 14,000 horsepower and a drag strip right over here in Brownsburg? It's like, yeah, I do want to see that. And it's like, holy shit, who built that engine? Oh, some hick from down yeah. south Indiana. <laughs> he, just, he built this entire thing. And then the carts, the, the, some of the sprint cars that are racing are being built by dudes that have full-time jobs as whatever, mm -hmm. literally in their barns at night. And in between races, they're tweaking them and the family's around. And it's like, it's like a, it's a really cool community to watch that. So I remember turning on the NASCAR race going, well, that's dumb. I don't, listen, I'm not a race expert, but that is, that is very dumb. But Bristol, Tennessee, is this middle of season? How long do we got left? Where are we in the season? Do we know? Oh, we just started. We're literally, uh, this will be week four. So we're, we're not very deep into the season. How are we so. running? We got a good car. You feel good? We're in a good spot? Well, the short track stuff's been a struggle for us. So it, Bristol's a short track. It's only a half mile in distance, but uh, so is the clash. And we finished second out there, you know, so we finished second at the clash. We were leading the Daytona 500 late in the going. I chose the wrong lane on a restart. We got shuffled back. I finished 12th. And then the next week was the, the three wide finish for the win where I was in the middle between the two guys. And I, I was the furthest back 
lost by a couple inches, but then um, six inches. Yeah, six about six that much. I, I've been looking for that my whole life. Yeah, bingo, uh, <laughs> bingo. Yeah, yeah. Everybody on the call. The, yeah. uh, haven't we all? And then uh, last weekend was uh, well, Vegas. We were in Vegas. We were leading a lot out there, and then we had a pit road issue that that got us behind towards the end. And then last week was was dismal. We were in Phoenix and uh, and not very good. So. Hopefully we can turn the tables back around our way here in Bristol. So F1, a lot of car talk, engineer talk, how they're building it, how they're piecing it together. IndyCar, same exact thing. I think how you build your car is a big deal and a big advantage, especially if you have great engineers and you figure out a track that you're supposed to be at, from what I've been told. NASCAR, same thing, because you just said it's like Legos, everybody's building the same shit. So do you know if your car is like a fast car versus slow cars for a season, for a week, going into it? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, so, yeah, exactly. Good question. Uh, the short track stuff's been a struggle for us, so we're not very good on the short tracks. But, like, the mile and a half, we've had a really good program on the mile and a half, and we've been fast at that. And then, um, you know, also the uh, the super speedways have been really good for us. So, like, Daytona, Talladega, Atlanta, we've been really fast at those tracks the last couple of years. So you can kind of see when you go to these places what guys will be fast at those particular racetracks. So you can have a good sense of, of who's going to be good, but – the, um, yeah, where was I going with that? Where your car is. It's where your car is. I'm getting right older. Now. This is harder to do. No, it's where your car is right now. I think you're about to say you can get a sense of what other people well, have. But so, also okay, you're you talking about F1. So F1 is, is wide open. Those guys design those cars from the ground up. They have a clean sheet of paper every year. So the engineering is by far ex way ahead of its time and what we do. IndyCar, those cars are kit cars as well, too. You buy them from all the same supplier. You only get your engines from different people. And then you go to the racetrack and you race. So you have your engineering staff, which is much smaller than F1, but it's it's kind of the same as NASCAR now. Like now we're not building our own cars anymore like we used to be doing five, six, 10 years ago. Um, we're buying the kit cars as well too. And we're assembling them. We have the different engine suppliers based on the manufacturer that you race for. And then you go out there and you know, hopefully your engineering team has figured it out and what the fastest way is at the track for that week. It feels like there'd be more parity in that particular style. Yeah. That's probably why Vanderstoppen has won 19. Yep. That's why they have an engineer. Correct. Yes. They, yeah. they have the it Oppenheimer. Is. Like last yeah, year, yeah. I think we had we 16 different winners throughout the year of NASCAR. I mean, that's that's unheard of. Five, six years ago, you might have eight. Okay. So this is good for racing. Does yeah. NASCAR want that, though? Does NASCAR want all these different winners? Well, yeah. I mean, they, they want parity. They want equality right they, they want everybody to be able to go out there and depending on how well the driver does the crew does the crew chief setting up the car everything it gives everybody a, a, a easier chance to win although it seems like it's harder now more than ever so um you just got to be on the right side of things so it's like execution based almost like if it is it is so you can set yourself further behind with mistakes than you can set yourself forward being perfect. Mm -hmm. exactly. Got it. Got it. Okay. That's why pit stops are even more important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. hey, exactly. NASCAR's pit stops gotta... are way important. It's easier to pass people in our sport now when they're sitting still. Smart. Hey, those, On pit road. Hey, those pit crews, those pit crews, ex-college football guys. Studs. Like, yep. They're, yep. They're full on, like, uh, I don't you know. You do that. Why don't you do that? I did one day. I was incredibly hungover, maybe even still drunk. Oh, yeah, definitely. We had a night. Out right. Yeah, exactly. Bingo. You've seen it. <laughs> you've, you've lived it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been, uh, yeah. yeah, and pretty functioning, pretty good. I, I think throughout my life, people would say that. But the whole, um, the whole, I, I want to, oh, which motorsport? Kendrick? Hendrick? Yes. H okay. Hendrick, Hendrick. Hendrick Motorsport, I think, over there in mm -hmm. Charlotte. They had a yeah, full yeah, campus. Yeah. They had a full campus. And I went and visited the pit crew, and it was like ex-football guys. A couple of my uh, old teammates played with guys in, like, NFL camps. Damn. They live there, full-time job. They train. It's like a full football schedule pretty much. They have practice. I saw for one practice. I ran out there, did the whole thing. I was just mm -hmm. George almost puked. It was tough. <laughs> went and lifted with the boys. It's a real – it's like a full-time job. Yeah. Get win races in there, Kyle. Let's win some races in there. You got to hey, win some races. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, here. Yep, boom, bang, oh, nice. pal. Look at that. I look back at my shoes. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to make it. <laughs> oh, fuck off, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, I would like to have you know I was incredibly hammered at that moment. Yep. Still from the night before. Oh, I think you and I should time. do a race on that. We, we should do a race. I'm not no pit crew guy either, so I, I definitely can't speak to the respect level that I have for those guys going out there and jumping in front of 60-mile-an-hour cars on pit road every week, but... You and I could certainly do the standstill race. I kick your what? Yeah, but I I've seen you throw that punch, 
So I do think you do have some athleticism. Sure. Yep. Sure. You know, not every race car driver has athleticism. Now, I do think it's a sport, what you guys do. I do think it is very difficult to do what you do. I think it takes a certain stamina to do what you do, a lot of talent and skill. But some, you know it. I've been in India a little bit. You put a football or a baseball in some of these drivers' hands. I mean, we're talking fucking fish out of not even water. Mm -hmm. We're talking fish. Oh, yeah. Out There's of some YouTube videos of that. I, I won't name names, but uh, <laughs> they're pretty hideous. But also, you put us in some cars. I'm totaling that thing. Yeah. You know, if we're on a, like, yeah. it's, a, it's a whole thing. Your punch was a good punch. Yep. Mm -hmm. Felt like that was an athletic punch there, Kyle. So I would have respect. I that. And you're <laughs> Learned that from my father-in-law. He was like, you know, all these guys, they want to fight, and they just go up to each other, and they jaw back and forth a little bit. He goes, don't even jaw. Like, just go. Hit him in the jaw. Smart. Love that. Yeah. Especially if we're not going to get arrested because it's at work. Right. You know, like that right. whole thing. That, that's uh -huh. good news. Tone's got a question yeah. for you, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle, a couple weeks ago I watched two racing movies, and they are both focused around the 24-hour Le Mans race. Um, and I know NASCAR, NASCAR had a team last year with Jimmy Johnson. Is that anything that you would ever want to do in your career, maybe team up with Jimmy and maybe, maybe like Jeff Gordon or Jr. or something like that and take down Le Mans? Yeah, no, that would be fun. Um, my my expertise in that area was uh, the Daytona 24 Hours. Uh, I ran that. Uh, it's probably three or four years now. I did it with uh, Team Lexus. They they let me be a part of the team, and there was four of us drivers, so me, three other guys, and um, we didn't fare so well. But um, <laughs> I did run the same lap times as the guy that runs it full time. So it actually gave me a good sense of like okay, I'm not bad. Like, I'm not the one holding us back here from going forward or, or having to in this thing. So that made me feel better about myself that I could jump into that and be good at that. So I, I liked it. It was fun. I would I would sure as hell, yeah, go run Lamont. That'd be cool. Yeah, we got crushed, but it wasn't my fault. So I've, yeah. I'm fucking yeah. sleeping yep. just fine. Yep. I'm sleeping just right. fine. And I... That's that car thing again. Those engineers, like, we need smarter ones. Yeah, yeah, of course. Hey, last question here. And thank you for your time. To, hey, Kyle, thank you for this time today. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. Learn, no worries. Learn, a lot, learn a lot about racing here. Connor's got a question for you, and this one, hey, he's putting you on a spot here, and if I know anything about KY, he's going he's gonna to respond in a beautiful fashion. Always, and uh, you know, Kyle, I would like to know uh, your personal NASCAR Mount Rushmore. Now, mine is uh, Dale Sr., sure. of course, uh, Jimmy, I mean, as as you mentioned, Jeff, and uh, it, you were the fourth one until you opened your stupid mouth about the New England <laughs> Patriots, so I'm going to you know, go ahead and throw Keselowski in there at four, but uh, oh, who, would, who would your top four be if you were just looking across the history of NASCAR? Yeah, um, for me, I would look at, um, man, it's tough because, you know, Jeff, four championships, Jimmy, seven, Dale, seven, those two are easy, so... Dale, obviously, Jeff Gordon, obviously, or excuse me, Jimmy Johnson, obviously. Yep. Because uh, me racing against Jimmy Johnson, I mean, going on a five-in-a-row feat, winning seven total in the same years that I was racing, I mean, he was beating me, and you guys said that I was great. So Yes. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Been on. Anyways, the, so the last two for me are, are kind of tough. You know, I like David Pearson because he's one, he's the second most winningest driver in the NASCAR Cup Series. Mm hmm um at 105 races but he never ran really for the championship so he doesn't have any of those mm -hmm. so do you go for a guy like um you know daryl waltrip who has 84 wins and three championships Damn. um i've run i've run the most races across all three series of nascar with truck xfinity and cup so i've got 230 total nascar wins Ooh, the yeah. most out of anybody so wow. um Dick I don't know. Do I put myself on there? Maybe you should. Uh, Kyle Paul Bush Edwards. should put Kyle Bush on his Mount yes. Rushmore. That is that should one thousand percent happen. Yes. What are we even talking? See, about? I'm not good at that though. Like I'm not. I'm not a self promoter guy. You know. I'm. I'm not a LeBron who's going to say <laughs> I'm the king. You know what I mean? I think there's another guy that could be better or is better. Well, I do appreciate you showed you showed some humility there with saying you know this guy's beating the shit out of me and I'm racing out here, so I got respect for his game in this entire thing. But that you were willing to race the trucks, I think the the second series and the main series for numerous years because we get to a Sunday race in some of these places and he's like Kyle has already won. 20 Twice this weekend. It's like, I didn't even know there was two other fucking races this weekend. It's like, well, he won in the trucks, and then he won in this series, and then he's looking to make it a clean sweep through the entire weekend. It's like, why isn't everybody doing this? And they're like, a lot of people are trying. Yeah, yeah This is not uh, something that's just easy to do. So I think I personally would put you at the top of the Mount Rushmore just strictly because you're the only NASCAR driver that I know very well. My answer <laughs> used to be, Kyle, literally all the time, and I don't know if you've ever heard this as you – Bow, me, 
<laughs> Your Zoom background just made you look sweet there. There is a matter of like, what, probably the last four years. Anytime racing got brought up, my answer was legitimately, is Kyle Busch running? Yep. If Kyle Busch is running, Kyle Busch is winning. Yep. That was my answer. On ESPN, I was asked about, I think some internet, I mean, it might have been F1 or something like that in like a brief moment. Like, oh, big F1 race this weekend, Pat, who do you like or whatever? And I'm like, is Kyle Busch running? If Kyle Busch is running, <laughs> Kyle Busch is winning. So I appreciate the fact that you're still doing it, still crushing it, and still winning. You make us look yeah. better. You know, yeah. in, in a oh, sport yeah. that we don't, nobody covers well enough, I don't think, which is NASCAR and racing. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I love my job. I wouldn't do anything else. People ask me, well, if, you, if you weren't a race car driver, what would you be doing? I said, I'd probably be picking up your garbage. So, you know, this is a good life, and I've been mm -hmm. doing pretty well at it. So I'm happy to be winning the races I'm winning, and I want more. Okay, well, keep doing that. Tell the family we said hello, and you would be a fantastic garbage picker, yeah, we yeah. think, if you had to do it. Goat. But instead, That's you're it. racing those cars, and you're crushing it. Thank you so much. Good luck this weekend yep. in Bristol. All right, appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who has 230 wins in the NASCAR series. Jeez. Kyle Busch. Hey, hey, wow.